Welcome to Proteins and Enzymes Part 4. Um, on this video tutorial, we're going to focus on the primary structure of um, proteins. Let's get started. So, um, as we know, a peptide is two or more amino acids bonded together. So, we'll do it in words and then we'll see it as an actual reaction. Right? So, the amine group of one amino acid and the acid group of the other amino acid undergo an acyl transfer reaction to form an amide bond. But now that we're talking about um, amino acids, we're going to call it a peptide bond. The, so the new molecule is a dipeptide, and then we can keep adding amino acids to build up our, our peptide chain to three, four, to many peptides. When we're writing a polypeptide, we're always going to write it with the N terminus on the left and the C terminus on the right. So, here we have um, the acyl transfer reaction. When you get to biology, they're going to call it synthetic dehydration. And so we have two um, amino acids here. This first amino acid is threonine. And then we have valine. And so they have um, three letter abbreviations. And so what's going to happen is we'll have the bond formation occurs here. And so it's always helpful to look at the carboxylic acid and the carbonyl carbon of the carboxylic acid. That um, gives us a landmark. And then we can see here is the peptide bond that formed to link the two amino acids. So um, we can, um, but to help you see this, before we go too much further, let's um, draw the neutral forms of the amino acids to help us see the reaction pathway. So remember, with carboxylic acids and amines, we always need to be able to overlay our acid-base chemistry. So let's do the neutral form to help us. So we'll make everything and we'll go here, let's see, we can put that there. There's our R group. So there's the threonine. And now we'll have the valine. Okay, so here's our landmark, the carbonyl carbon. And so we call this synthetic dehydration. It'll always be the alcohol group. Remember everything you learned from our functional group reactivity. So we call it synthetic dehydration because we're taking two small amino acids and linking them together to form a dipeptide. And water will be produced as a byproduct. So now to finish this up, so then let's put these together. So here's our first amino acid. And then we'll bring in the second amino acid and we kind of naturally get this flipping of the R groups up and down. And then there's the OH. So here is our carbonyl carbon. Here is our peptide bond, and so when we look at this dipeptide, we look right to the left of the peptide bond. We have our threonine, and to the right of the peptide bond, we have valine. All right, so I think if we look at the bottom, what was our to-do list here? So we've drawn an arrow to the peptide bond connecting the two amino acids. And we've circled each of the um, amino acid components, creating the dipeptide. And then just for a brief review, what is the um, term we would use to describe the relationship between valine threonine, the dipeptide, or threonine valine, right? Well, they're going to have the same chemical formula However, right, the connections are different 
different bonding, different connection between atoms. And so when, when two molecules, um, two dipeptides, if this applies, right, they're structural isomers or constitutional isomers. Alrighty, so the main thing here is to recognize that when we're talking about the primary structure, we're talking about the amino acid sequence. So here we practiced putting amino acids together to create peptides. Now we'll practice in the reverse direction. So on the next page, we will look at a tripeptide, and now we will um, go in reverse. We'll do the hydrolysis reaction. So we'll use all your understanding of amide hydrolysis to do our peptide hydrolysis. So when we're looking at an amino acid sequence, or tripeptide, for me the first thing I like to do is I find all of the carbonyl carbons. That helps me get my bearings. And then we know, right, that this bond linking the carbonyl to the nitrogen, those are the peptide bonds. Part one. Now let's make sure that we can distinguish the R groups. So here is our first side chain, our R group. And then here's our second R group, our side chain. And our third. So let's practice what we've been learning about amino acids and classify these. So this first R group, hydrocarbons. Very straightforward. Nonpolar. Here we do have a heteroatom sulfur, but there it's not bonded to hydrogen. It's sandwiched between two R groups. So it's also nonpolar. And then with this third R group, right, we see the carboxylate, so we recognize that as an acidic R group. Alrighty. So now um, the N-terminus and the C-terminus, right? So we're always going to write our peptides with our N-terminus on the left and our C-terminus on the right. And then last but not least, um, let's write the amino acid sequence. And so we're going to have to look back through our amino acids and um, I am scrambling to find my amino acid list, so let's look at that, right? So based off the R groups, we look here, so this benzene ring is really handy, it's a good handle, and so we can recognize that our first amino acid is phenylalanine, and that's symbolized PHE, and then our second, the sulfur is very handy, and so we can see that's methionine, so that's MET. And then our last R group, we see, oh, look, there's two carbons with a carboxylic acid. So we look at our amino acid list, oh, and that's glutamic acid. So the peptide sequence would be, is written like this. So that's the last part. So these, um, so this was good practice of all the skills that you would need for um, amino acids and their primary structure. You want to be able to recognize the N-terminus and the C-terminus, the R groups, the peptide bonds, and then use the R groups to determine the peptide sequence. Um, so now let's have you practice that. Um, so here we have a tripeptide sequence with, um, I think that's, yeah, glutamine, serine, and cysteine. And we want to look at them at um, physiological pH. So for me, I think it's easier to start with the amino acids in their neutral form because that's how we learned the reactions originally. So we look at our amino acid list, which you'll always have for quizzes and tests. And we draw the first one. Yeah, so there's glutamic acid right there. So there's our GLU. 
Okay, now we'll bring in the serine. So always drawing with the N terminus um, to the C terminus. And then we'll bring in cysteine, the last amino acid. And that has the thiol. Okay, so step one, look on our amino acid list and write out um, the amino acids in the correct orientation with the nitrogen on the left, the carboxylic acid on the right, and then it really helps with the R groups to flip them down, up, down. It's a pattern. And so then we know with our synthetic dehydration, our acyl derivative formation, that carboxylic acids react with amines to form amides. So here is the water that gets produced. And then that leads us to our products. Okay, so we'll rewrite them, but now we'll have the peptide bonds um, to keep our bearings. Let's focus on those carbonyl carbons. And yeah, so I think that's enough for there. Okay, so now we bring in the second amino acid. Maybe this should be in red, right? So there's our peptide bond from the carboxylic acid of the first amino acid to the amine of the second. So then we have that, and then that will form our peptide bond. And then we have our third amino acid right there. Okay, so now we have created our tripeptide. And then the last piece then is to redraw it at physiological pH, right, which is 7.4. So now we're going to at pH 7.4. So then this is where we overlay our acid base chemistry. So anytime we have an amine, we want to show it protonated. And then this carboxylic acid here, we know that fit. Oh yeah, it just fits, right? Carboxylic acids get deprotonated. Now, of course, this is an amide, right? So nothing happens there. There's our amide bond. And the NH tends to get written up like that. Now we we're on to our second amino acid. And there's gonna be the second peptide bond. And then there's the nitrogen. And then we'll be there. Oops. And there's the SH. Okay. So we have it. So remembering to deprotonate all carboxylic acids, protonating amines. Remember, right? Alcohols are neutral and thiols are neutral. So there's no acid base chemistry there. All righty. So that concludes our um, primary sequence of proteins, which is all about the amino acid sequence. You want to be able to bring together amino acids to form peptides or hydrolyze them to um, bring them back down to their original amino acid form, being aware of the acid-base chemistry. Um, please reinforce your understanding with a few homework problems now.